I'm Annie Studebaker and I bring to you an abundance of knowledge from our South Texas rural communities. Follow me as I take you on a journey of inspiration and insight that will offer a deeper connection with people and businesses. Today I will show you how rewarding hunting can be. The delicious flavor of grilled elk, caramelized venison, and a pork meatloaf will be recipes that you and your family will truly enjoy. Okay, Nancy, you're about to show us something with elk meat. Tell me about it. Okay, this is elk meat from uh, New Mexico. My husband went hunting up there and got an elk and of course they're very very large animals and we have a lot of meat this happens to be the fillet wow. or the back strap and uh, it's a little frozen on the inside we started thaw thawing it out but we want to cut it before it's completely thawed because it's much much easier to do that it's better to so slice it that way yeah what we're going to do we're going to fix them virtually the same way we did the uh the dove and so I'm putting it in the marinade right now, and we'll marinate it for a little bit. But we cut the, the uh, elk in thin slices and uh, put it in the marinade and let it set for maybe an hour or so, and uh, then we'll wrap them just like oh, we did just the doves. Like the doves. So Same you can do that with venison. Let me help which you. Which we have a lot here, you know, a okay. lot of venison here. All right, let me reach over here and start helping you. Okay. See if this knife will do the trick. If not, okay, not very thin, but not very thick. Right. Okay. This makes a great meal, and you just throw it on the the grill when you do the uh, the dove. Nice. Okay, and we're using the same marinade, so I should put a little bit more in yes. here, right? Okay. I'm going to stir it up over here, as you can see. It's going to marinate for how long? Do you marinate it? Well, you, actually, again, you can marinate it overnight if you like. But a couple of hours is, is good, and it also um, makes it tender. But this actually by itself is very tender. Oh, I it know. It is wonderful meat, wonderful I've, meat. You've given um, me elk before. It's delicious, girl. Love it. You can hardly tell the difference between this and beef. Can't. And the thing about elk is that it's um, organic. It uh, has no uh, antibiotics or no... Uh, hormones or anything oh, added to it nice, comes nice. straight out of the wild where they've had wonderful things to eat there and so it's wonderful meat yes and um, up there the foliage that they eat is so good and it's uh, a lot of that has uh, uh, depends on how your meat tastes as to what they've been eating all natural eating all here. natural but also good flavored Delicious. So what we do is we just uh, cut it. It's like I say, right in the center. It's still a little, little frozen, frozen, yeah. But it's, but it's doing easier it. to cut that way. Yes, it is. It stays whole. So then, when you marinate it for a couple of hours, wow, lovely! Then, Look at this. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't nice. have any fat in it. That's wonderful. The fat and flavor I guess you get from the bacon. Nice. But the meat itself is very, very so good. So we're gonna wait. A couple, couple of hours, hours, and then we'll come back and wrap them. Okay, good. we'll do. Let's, uh, do you keep them in the refrigerator? Yes. For little? Okay, yes. let's put, put this in the refrigerator. the refrigerator. But you know, sometimes I like to do this, especially for meat, to take the meat the tenderizer. So you tenderize it, and not only that, but you are actually forcing the uh, marinade down into the meat. Oh, this is great. And, so, and it does kind of spread it out a little bit because you're going to roll it. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be too thick. Well, that's good. Just a little bit. It doesn't Just a have little to bit, yeah. be much. There, let's try these for. Oh, okay, let's wrap these up. Okay, let's take a couple pieces of bacon. Okay. And our pepper. Okay, I'm gonna do and what you're doing. And we can do the same thing we did with the dubs. Just put some with pepper in it. And, and some, some with without. cheese. With okay, pepper. you so want me to slice the bacon? Sure. Oh no, wait a minute. We, when do you put the bacon? Uh, you're gonna put the bacon on after you put the pepper Okay, in. we're gonna slice it, right? We're yeah. using half of it. Let's see, this Let me use this knife. One. 
Oh yeah, this knife's good. <laughs> this is a good knife right there. Okay, so here's bacon for you. Well now wait a minute, we've got to cut this one in half. There it is. Okay, so. So just roll it up like we did the other. The bacon. Okay. Ooh, smells good too. <laughs> Perfect. Got that jalapeno in place. Yummy. I need a big one. Well, they'll eat well tonight. Oh, how nice. And again, this is a simple little wrap, just like we did the doves, uh, just a pepper inside. But the nice thing is we marinated it in that really, really tasty Italian dressing, oh. which gives it a good flavor. You don't have to salt and pepper it or anything like that. Right. Okay, let's, and we're gonna do some cheese ones as well, right? Yes, we wanna do the cheese ones. See, these are a little bit smaller because we flattened them and that makes it nice so they'll yes. cook. Um, Let me try that. All the way through. There you go. Let's see, let's do some cheese. Okay, okay. I get your knives over there. For a side dish, mm -hmm. I'll use a um, some wild rice or a mm. mixture of wild rice and uh, brown rice, and then we uh, then some green beans or some vegetable, fresh vegetable. Oh, with your garden, ah. I brought some zucchini and some uh, yellow squash from my garden, and we're going to make shish kebab out of oh, that. Oh, that'll be great. So. And you know, you can get um, well, some cheese now that's got hotter peppers in it than just the little Well, jalapenos. I don't like it that hot. I want to be able to taste the flavor here. But um, I don't think the, these jalapenos are very hot when they, they're raw and cooked like that. I don't know, I may be wrong, but we'll see. Good deal. You're a pro already. Better believe it, <laughs> thanks to you. Well, thanks, girl. <laughs> okay, okay, let's get these ready for the grill. All righty, let's go. Hmm. Unbelievable. Good. I don't even know that I'm eating wild game. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. You can hardly tell the difference between this and And it's beef. super soft, soft mm -hmm. meat. When we return, I will show you how to cook venison with a twist. It will be caramelized. Kaya weighed just one pound, one ounce at birth and endured a grueling 163 days in the hospital. Thanks to research funded by the March of Dimes, Kaya survived premature birth, the number one killer of babies in the United States. The birth of a child is supposed to be a joyful event, yet each year about 380,000 babies like Kaya are born too soon, and many have serious health problems that can last a lifetime. But you can change that. Join three million friends, families, and colleagues in more than 500 communities across the nation in March for Babies. The money we raise is so important in fighting premature birth and other life-threatening challenges that newborns face. We're supporting research and programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Sign up, join a team, and start fundraising today at MarchForBabies.org. Together, we can fight premature birth and help more babies be born healthy. Do you have an interesting story to tell? Share it with us. BTX Channel 1 is all about community, and that means you, your friends, and your town. If you know someone the world should know about, or if there's a place nearby that you think people need to visit, let us know. We want to make your community a part of our community. Give us a call at 956-642-1307 or send us an email to vtxtv at vtx1.net.
Okay, we're about to cook venison, and I'm gonna give it a sweet, lemony taste that you are going to love. Uh, it's really a good recipe. What I have here is some bacon fat, and it's nice and hot, and I'm going to coat the venison, which I've cut up into big pieces. And I've got salt and pepper in this flour, that's all I have. And I'm gonna put it in here and let them brown. You don't really want to overcook these because they will dry up. So I'm just going to quickly mix this. Make sure it's pretty coated with flour, this flour mixture. All it has is salt and pepper, so for flavoring. Okay, I'm gonna turn these over. See they're browning? Mmm, yummy. Let them get really brown, there we go. Just a little bit longer on, on that side. And now we're, we'll remove some of this oil, which is bacon fat, really, and then we'll um, force, um, we'll put the lime juice with the, the molasses. I have two tablespoons of lime juice, and I have about four tablespoons of molasses here, and uh, I'll mix those together, and once these are all browned, we'll remove them, of course, Put the molasses in there, cook it a little bit, and then add the venison. And it'll be ready in no time. You're gonna love it. Now I've gotta flip these babies over. If you get too many in the pan, um, it'll develop moisture and you don't want that. You want them to fry. It gives it that good taste. Now I'm browning the last batch of venison. So we're almost done. What we're going to do next is we're going to remove some of this bacon fat and of course remove the venison. To the bacon fat we're going to add the molasses and lime mixture. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and remove them so they don't dry up because they still have to cook a little bit more with the molasses and lime juice. Now what you want to do is we need to remove some of this bacon grease. And don't hold the bowl while you're doing that because that can get very hot. So kind of. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I have very little bacon grease here and this, we had already, we've already browned the venison. So pretty much seared it. We didn't wanna cook it all the way through because it still has to cook with um, with the molasses and the lime juice. I'm gonna go ahead and mix these two together. And, and we're going to add this to what's left of the bacon grease. Yummy. And let it uh, cook a little bit there. And this is going to give it a tangy, mm, sweet taste. See that? Look at that. Wow. So let it cook down a little bit. There it is. I'm going to move it over the fire again. There we go. And we want it to reduce the liquid and keep, it's going to thicken a little bit once the molasses uh, dries up a little bit. Mm. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and stick this venison in there because remember it's not fully cooked and we want it to cook all the way through. You don't want to eat raw venison. And now I'm going to turn the fire up a little bit and it's going to caramelize a little bit more. It's starting to already. Look at that. Oh wow. Mmm. This is, this is something delicious. Okay, this is what I also like to do. I like to just get about that much hot chili flakes, crushed red pepper, and add a little bit more. 
So it's got this little bite to it, okay? Oh, wow, that's starting to smell delicious. Mmm, look at that. It's almost done. Okay, what's happened here now, this molasses has stuck to the venison and it's delicious. So we're ready to turn the fire off. Now I'm going to put most of it over here, save some for my husband and my son. And I'm gonna taste some. I get to eat some right now. get to try this now. See, it's cooked all the way through. Mmm. Real good. The lime juice and the molasses has given this venison a very special taste. Your kids are gonna love it, except you may not want to add the crushed, the red crushed peppers. So I'm going to keep eating. Thank you for joining me. When we return, I will show you how to make a spinach stuffed pork meatloaf. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there. What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs, just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Hi, I'm Hilary Duff. As a mom, I'm proud to support the March of Dimes in helping more women have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. That's why I walk in March for Babies. The money we raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org. Together, we can help make healthier babies possible for thousands of families. I'm a firefighter. A teacher. I'm a farmer. I'm a barber. A waitress. A mom. We're all part of your community. Every day we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when you experience a moment of uncertainty. Something or someone's behavior that doesn't seem quite right. These are the moments to take a pause. Because if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not. It's not about paranoia. Or being afraid. It's about standing up and protecting our communities. One detail at a time. Because a lot of little details can become a pattern. We. 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 We trust our instincts. Just like you should. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious meatloaf out of ground pork. Uh, this is that wild hog that uh, I shot when I went hunting with Robert Lyle. I had never shot a wild pig before, but anyway, here it is, and it's going to be a tasty meal for us tonight. I'm making meatloaf with the ground pork, and uh, 
it's gonna be stuffed with spinach. So let me show you how to begin here. I'm gonna start with uh, taking these two eggs and I'm going to mix them a little bit in this bowl. Just a little bit, a rough little mix. Just make sure the yolks are, are mixed together. Okay, now I have a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and I'm gonna add it to the egg mixture. I also have a teaspoon of par dry par parsley, that is. I have a teaspoon of uh, garlic powder, a third cup of ketchup, We have the salt. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt in here because that's going to be the, give it the flavors. And I'm gonna throw all this pepper in there. I like a lot of pepper in mine. Now we're gonna mix this. Give it a quick mix. Make sure all the dry ingredients are blended in with the egg. And that is about it. Once we've done that, I have my pound of ground pork. And here, I'm going to add half a cup of quick oats. And I'm gonna add half a cup of diced onions. Now I need to mix that, so I've got my wooden spoon here. and Mix it up a little bit. Then it becomes easier once you put this wet mixture in there. So now I'm adding the egg mixture. Mmm. Can't wait till this is done. It's gonna be delicious. Mix that real good. There we go. That looks pretty good. Oh, wow. My husband and my son just love this recipe. So I had to try that wild pork and they loved it too. So, okay, now what I've got here is I've got this uh, rectangular pan. You could use a cookie sheet, whatever you prefer. And uh, I'm not going to fill the whole thing side to side. I'm gonna make a loaf in the center. So I'm only going to use half of this mixture for the, for the bottom, of course. Okay, and you kind of flatten it out to begin with because you're going to put the bed of spinach on there. So there it is. I'm gonna put a little bit more on the bottom. This little bit gives me a bigger surface. And now this is um, about a cup of uh, raw spinach. I've got organic spinach here, so that's pretty good. And it's, it's not gonna stay in there as easy as you think, but it's going to work. So that's all you need, and now you're gonna go ahead and put the rest on top, trying to get that spinach back in the center, okay? So this is why I called it stuffed meatloaf. It's really, really good. Try to stick the spinach in there. I didn't even have to dice this spinach. I got baby spinach. Now I'm gonna stick it with my hands in here, hide a little bit of it. And there we go. And keep adding the meat mixture, like this. There we go, we kind of Try to cover as much as we can the spinach. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna bring this meatloaf towards the center of the pan. Why is that? It's because we're fixing to wrap it in bacon. So that's what makes it good. So we're gonna make, make it like this. And it'll be easier for us to wrap, okay? So here's the bacon. I have about five strips, so I'm going to begin on this side and just tuck it under right there. You want it on the side, gives, oh, bacon, you know how bacon is, gives everything good flavor. Just made a mess, little mess there, but that's okay. 
And then we do this again. I'm going to tuck them all together here in a minute. And here's my last piece of bacon. And that way I can tuck them all under, all together. Man, doesn't that look good? Now guess what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna add ketchup on top. That will caramelize with the bacon fat. Oh, it's gonna be so, so good. I have about a third cup of, of um, ketchup here, so. As simple as that. Now we're gonna bake it 375 for about 55 minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it in the center, make sure it's fully cooked, and then we're ready to serve. Okay, my meatloaf has cooked for 55 minutes. It's a, it's a pound of ground pork, and uh, it's ready. I get to try it now, so this is the fun part. I'm gonna use a knife because we want it to cut through the, the bacon. So I'm gonna kinda of hold it in place. And then I'm just going to cut a little sliver. Oh, that looks beautiful. Tender as can be. Remember, we stuffed it with spinach. It may still come apart, but it's so nice and tender. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? There it is. That's a part of that meatloaf. And now I get to try it. See the spinach? There it is. Mmm. Oh. Really, really good. The ketchup gave it a little sweetness. The spinach, it's a stuffed meatloaf. It's really marvelous. You've really got to try this. Mm -mm -mm. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe as much as I'm about to right now. So. Until next time. Hunting can be very rewarding. There are a variety of ways to cook elk, venison, and wild hog, but these recipes are special because they're truly delicious.